I guess we may start. Uh, so thank you very much for coming. Uh, first, um, let me, yes, today I will talk about uh, new features of Zabbix 4.0. And uh, I will go maybe a little bit deeper today since it's like a workshop, but I don't have, I don't see your laptops ready. So it's, it's not going to be a real kind of uh, hands-on, but mostly I will demonstrate some of the new features of Zabbix 4.0, maybe some of the features of 3.4 as well. So, uh, my name is Alexey Vladyshev. I am a founder and uh, CEO of Zabbix company. I've been working on Zabbix for almost 20 years now. And uh, actually not only myself, but currently Zabbix is being developed by a team of around 60 people. And we have our kind of the main location, our headquarters, not so far away, just maybe one, one hour flight from Warsaw to Riga. We are in Latvia. Uh, and uh, we, we have the team of developers there, support guys, uh, marketing sales, um, some the, mostly I, I believe maybe 80% of people, of Zabbix people are there. But also we have uh, two locations, additional locations, one office in Tokyo in Japan and another location in New York. So we are actually building the software and uh, providing support, 24 seven support globally everywhere in Poland, in Europe, in North America, South America, basically everywhere. So yes, today we'll talk about Zabbix 4.0. We'll demonstrate some of the features of Zabbix 4.0. But before I start, how many of you use Zabbix already? Okay, and uh, who never heard about Zabbix or never used Zabbix? Okay, and uh, okay, so most of you know Zabbix, that's good because uh, actually in the description of my workshop I, I said that okay, all guys are welcome if you know Zabbix or you don't know Zabbix, very welcome. But I think it will be a little bit tough for those guys who don't know Zabbix at all. But I will try to explain some of the concept during the talk. Anyway, uh, I will also demonstrate maybe some of the difference between Zabbix 3.4 and Zabbix 4.0. And we'll do a little bit maybe of practical since we have, I guess, quite a lot of time, two hours. So I will uh, do a little bit more deeper and we'll do some, some, practical, some practical work as well. So uh, where we are at the moment? Uh, at this moment, uh, we have Zabbix 3.0 released. Zabbix 3.0 is LTS. LTS means we support it for five years, so it's long-term support. We have Zabbix 3.2, we have Zabbix 3.4 released, and currently uh, we are working on, uh, on Zabbix 4.0. But for those of you who are still running maybe Zabbix 2 or Zabbix 3.0 or Zabbix 3.2, I would like to remind you some of the very nice features of Zabbix 3.4. Yeah, and I will talk about some of these features today. One is about uh, item preprocessing. This is very, very powerful and quite unique feature to Zabbix. This is a way how to, how to make kind of conversion pipelines of data in Zabbix. So you receive data in one format, maybe some JSON. At the end, you'd like to, to, to get some integers or data converted uh, in, in some way. So you can do it in Zabbix. Also, maps and dashboard, they, they got uh, a huge improvements in Zabbix, in Zabbix uh, 3.4. 3 notification on acknowledgements. So as soon as you acknowledge a problem, it is possible to set up notifications. So all people in your team, they will know already that, okay, someone is working, someone is working on your problem. Also, remote command execution by proxies. So say you're running a distributed uh, monitoring with Zabbix with many, many locations and you'd like Zabbix to, to do a kind of uh, automatic problem remediation in a remote location. Yeah, before Zabbix 3.4, uh, it wasn't easy to implement, but now it's natively supported by Zabbix proxies. So you don't have to think about, is it supported by proxy or it's not supported by proxy. Remote commands, so this automatic remote commands will work everywhere. Yeah, so which is, uh, really, really great news. 
And in 3.4.6 or 7, I think, we also introduced support of Elasticsearch. So now Elasticsearch can be used as a backend uh, storage for historical data. Yeah. Uh, basically, currently you have a choice. You may keep you may keep data in a MySQL or Postgres or Oracle or DB2. Now we support also Elasticsearch, but Elasticsearch is only for historical data, for history, for trends. Uh, but uh, quite often Elasticsearch is used like uh, some sort of uh, uh, middleware uh, for integration of Zabbix with, with, with other tools, maybe some business analytics tools or some big data uh, and so on. So these are quite good reasons to, to upgrade to 3.4. But now uh, Zabbix 4.0 is, is under, develop, uh, under development. Uh, we are quite close uh, to release of 4.0. I think uh, maybe we will need around maybe two months time. Yeah, I'm very, very bad at giving promises. Yeah, so sometimes I tell, okay, it will be ready in May, but no, it will, is not ready in May, it's in June, in July. But I think we are quite close to the official release of Zabbix 4.0. We still have some features uh, in QA, some features in development, but it's about three or four features we have to finish and then 4.0 will be released. So, uh, if you, I don't know, you don't have, uh, I don't see many laptops, but some of you who wants to play with the latest Zabbix 4.0, um, you may basically get this information from, if you go to zabbix.com slash downloads, to download page, this information is available there. You select your, uh, I don't know if internet is working fine, so I can demonstrate you quickly. Just um, zabbix.com downloads oops okay so and here obviously you see some stable releases Abix 3.4, 3.2, 3.0, 2.2, LTS but also if you want to play with the alpha release of Zabbix 4.0 you may, you may go here, you select uh, pre 4.0, then you select what uh, operating distribution, what operating system you're interested in, CentOS, Debian, Oracle, Red Hat, uh, Ubuntu. Uh, then you select a pre uh, version of operating system and basically you get a quick how to, how to, how to set up Zabbix. And normally it's, it's, it's a very straightforward procedure. Just done, uh, yum install if you're on Red Hat or CentOS or it's um, uh, it's uh, uh, apt install, so it's it, it it is quite easy. Yeah, but before bef before you install uh, Zabbix, you obviously must have uh, a database uh, pre-installed, like MySQL or Postgres. Uh, on my computer, I already have kind of my development environment. I, I haven't installed Zabbix from packages. I didn't use RPM or dev packages. I installed everything from sources. That's why I will have some long paths to my uh, binaries. But now let's talk about uh, improvements we make in Zabbix 4.0. One area of improvements is related to security and performance. Uh, and actually we improved the performance of a problem processing quite significantly. Yeah, in Zabbix 3. Dot, in Zabbix 3. Dot X, um, actually, when you have a trigger, a trigger may look like host name has just been restarted. Yeah, and host name afterwards would be replaced with some actual host name. Yeah, uh, and then when Zabbix displayed the problems in, under monitoring problems or in a dashboard it should actually convert, it should replace all macros with, uh, with the real values, yeah? And it actually caused a little bit of performance hit. In Zabbix 4.0, and uh, in, in a list of problems, if you go to the table events or you go to the uh, table problems, you wouldn't see a problem name, you wouldn't see event name. 
all are automatically calculated based on the trigger name. Yeah, and it was quite a CPU intensive process. And in Zabbix, uh, so this is where, when, when we display it in a monitoring problems, for example, so we had to replace hostname macro with the actual hostname, Linux 06 or Linux 07, and it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's not that fast. So in uh, Zabbix 4.0, now Zabbix server does this conversion and uh, on the database, in events, in the problems, we, Zabbix keeps the actual problem name with all macros expanded. So when we select, when we select problems uh, from the database or we use API, it works much, much faster right now, okay? And actually we, we may even do some, I don't know, if you are, if you are interested, we may basically connect to, to our database, uh, uh, select uh, some, um, select problems. This is basically the list of current problems. Limit 10, oh, problem. Okay, and um, we see, we see actually the problem name here. Okay, so this one column. Oh, sorry, not trigger a name. Basically just a name, yeah. And we see that uh, those names are kept uh, kept in the database. So it really creates uh, kind of um, more consistent uh, architecture and really separates the problems and events from, from other processing which we do in Zabbix. Um, what we introduced as well is a compression for server proxy communication. Uh, before Zabbix 4.0, we basically passed information between the proxies and between servers using JSON, just plain text JSON, and it worked. It worked very well. Uh, but uh, if you have kind of large scale uh, monitoring, it's it's really easy to well to hit some kind of bandwidth bandwidth limitation. So we introduced the compression, and compression is be, is on by default. So if you install the proxies. All proxies are starting from Zabbix 4.0 will be with compression enabled by default. Okay, and as soon as Zabbix discover, but actually it's still possible to compile Zabbix proxy binary without a compression. It, it's still possible. So if you're concerned maybe about CPU usage on, on low power devices, you can still compile Zabbix proxy without compression, or maybe you have some, I don't know, Maybe some I don't know, security reasons to to to, to pass uh, traffic in a plain text. Uh, it, it it is possible to, to to do it without compression. And then and then in Zabbix UI and administration proxies, you can see the list of proxies, and you could see is compression is on or off by to to a specific proxy. In this case, I have main proxy which is without compression and remote proxy with the compression on. There is no way to control it. You cannot switch it on, switch it off. It just kind of read only status of the actual status of proxies. As soon as Zabbix server discovers that traffic comes in a compressed way, it will start uh, send data to that proxy also compressed. It, it, it figures out, it understands that proxy supports compression. That's fine, we start compressing all traffic with this specific uh, proxy. Uh, and we did uh, some testing in our, in our test lab. And this is the situation with bandwidth before, uh, before compression. So there is no compression until this moment. And here is, here is compression, yeah? So as you can see, it's about five times uh, less uh, traffic. Yeah, so this is really, really nice. Especially, we have, we have uh, some customers with, with more than 10,000 of proxies. We have some customers, we have very heavily uh, used proxies, which really uses lots of bandwidth, like uh, hundreds of uh, megabits uh, consumed. So this is very good news. 
what, what is really nice that it really improves uh, data transfer speed very much, especially if you have a high latency between a proxy and between a Zabbix server side. There will be much less hops between one point and another point. And also, according to our test, there is absolutely no visible impact on CPU usage. Yeah, we use quite low powered devices and compression is really, really cheap now. Yeah, so you enable the compression, disable compression, you don't see any impact on the CPU usage or any impact on the memory usage. So, so that's, that's, uh, that will be used by default starting from Zabbix 4.0. Um, we also improved security a little bit. Uh, uh, actually, uh, for active proxies, you may s you may put a list of proxy addresses. Okay, so this is an active proxy, and this is a passive proxy. For passive proxy, you actually have to specify, and this is mandatory now, IP address or a network mask of Zabbix server. Connections from other IP addresses will not be accepted, all right? And for active proxies, you also specify what is the proxy address. If some uh, other device uh, sends the traffic on behalf of this proxy, this traffic won't be accepted. Yeah, it will be, it will be rejected by default. Um, what else? We, uh, there are also some better integration options. Uh, we made quite significant improvements here. One is uh, real-time export of history and trends into a file. Okay, so all data collected by Zabbix can is stored automatically into Zabbix database. Could be MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, DB2, or Elastic. Uh, and also optionally, you may enable storage of the history data in in, in local files in the local file systems. It might be useful if you want if, if you want to have some kind of um, highly available uh, storage, kind of local storage, which you would use for integration purposes. For example, if you have some I don't know some Hadoop clusters for big data analytics or uh, Elastic or Vertica, so you may basically get this data which we keep in the files and push them to a remote location, to remote remote data storage. Uh, and uh, all information which we keep in these files is in JSON. Okay, so it's basically end of line separated JSON. For each, uh, for, for each value, we have uh, a single line in the file, okay? So for each trend, we have a single line, so it's really easy to process. Uh, I think uh, I, can, I can try to enable this feature and we'll show how it looks like. So basically, in order to enable this feature, we have to use just the two parameters. One is export dir, when we specify a location of a history and trends file. And another, um, uh, another parameter is called export file size. So we do a log rotation as well. So this is a maximum maximum file size uh, um, of, of single file. And then Zabbix does a log rotation, okay? It creates a new file and it renames an older file, the bigger file, okay? Um, so, okay, I'll, I, will, I will do this uh, just very quickly. We'll create this experiment. We'll create a, is it okay? Is it visible for, okay, cool. Maybe some, We'll create um, a directory temporary history, and I will also make some modifications in Zabbix configuration file. And as you can see, all options are described very well here. Okay, I don't, I don't know if you see it or not. In a blue color, it's not so well visible, but basically, as you can see, so it's it's all here. Yeah, so if you're not sure what, what, what this parameter is for, you just take a default configuration files and all these parameters are described briefly. Okay. Anyway, so I will just enable export dir, TMP history. 
and uh, I don't really want to fill up my file system so I will use maybe one Mac export file size. I have Zabbix server running on, on this machine. This is my kind of uh, development environment, but I will just restart my Zabbix server, okay? We'll do it like this. And also I will, I will run it, okay? And so and now we may have a look how how those files looks like, all right? Uh, so we have, in Zabbix we have a different processes, like uh, history, uh, history syncers, and, uh, pro and oh, as you can see, trans history syncer one, uh, history, history syncer one, and so on. So we have two types of, uh, basically three types of files, history, problems, where we write uh, information about problems and trends. So if you're interested in uh, historical data, we will obviously have a look at history, history sinker, uh, history sinker one, for example, and we could see, and the extension is ndjson, so basically it is uh, um, end of line separated uh, JSON. So as, as, as you can see, it's just one line, Here it is. So, and actually we have quite a lot of information here. We have the item ID, so we know what what metric is involved. We also have additional information like a host name, like a groups uh, name of this uh, specific metric, and also timestamp and the actual value. And then we may write some simple program, which should basically work as a tail minus F. It will just read. Uh, what what is written to those uh, history files and push this information to some some uh, some external storage yeah so if I do tail minus f history history sinker one there will be there will be uh, as you can see this so so the information the information is coming okay and also it's not only about uh, trends and history we also have ability to, to, to keep information about the problems. And as you can see, it's basically the similar, similar format. It's JSON, clock, uh, the timestamp, event ID, name, like uh, CPU load is too high on Linux 907, then host, groups, and tags. As you can see, so there are some tags associated with this problem. So it happened in the data center, New York 2, service Jira, and environment production. Okay, so okay, again, you, you may take this information and push it somewhere else, maybe for, for some correlation purposes or for, for something else. By the way, if you have any questions or any comments or you want me to go deeper into some features, just let me know. Yeah, so it, I'd like, I really want to like it, uh, I'd like to make it m interactive, so I really want to understand what is, what's your interest here. Okay. All right, any questions here? Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember. I, I, I remember that we had this discussion internally. If you want to support, uh, I think yes. I think we can do it. I can. I, I, I will try to find this information for you. Um, I believe we have additional parameter which really specifies what kind of information has to be exported. Yeah. And we can, we can do it only for problems, or only for history, or only for trends. It will be very logical, otherwise it just... <laughs> uh, everything or not everything, yeah. Um, okay, so inventory macro support and event tags. Uh, first, I think uh, most of you already know that in Zabbix you may define tags, problem tags. Those problem tags are defined on a trigger level. So for each trigger, you may define a tag, so for example, the data center, 
and optional value. Yeah, in this case, the value is New York 2 or environment, production, service, Jira, or you may have any tax you want. It's really up to you. There are no limits on number of tax. There, there is no limits of what tax you would like to create. Uh, but in Zabbix, we already have information uh, stored in, in the host inventory. This information about the location of the host, some contact details, maybe operating system details, whatever. Lots of lots of information. And obviously, it was quite logical uh, st uh, step to support ability to use this information from host inventory in tags. So that's what we implemented. We basically implemented the ability to use uh, uh, inventory macros for tags. So when we define a tag data center, we don't, we, we don't actually, there is one way to use some hard-coded value like uh, New York 2, or we may take this information straight to inventory if we have this information in inventory. So we use uh, inventory location, or we may use inventory address, or inventory uh, some, some other fields from inventory. Okay? So location New York 2, we use this macro in a configuration of triggers, inventory location, and then when problem is generated, this information will be taken straight from uh, inventory field. This is really, really nice. And this way we can actually, um, we, we may take all sorts of data, for example, some geographical coordinates like, uh, uh, we, we, may, we may display information here. As problem has happened, we may tell exactly where the problem has happened, yeah? in what country, in which, in which specific location, and we take this information from inventory. Um, this is a quite a small improvement uh, in Zabbix. It's about how Zabbix works with units. So when we define a metric in Zabbix or item, you, you may specify a unit like bytes or bits or transactions per second or something like that, yeah? And by default, Zabbix would, uh, would add some prefixes like kilo or mega or giga. And uh, in before Zabbix 4.0, there were absolutely no control and there was no way to tell Zabbix, okay, please don't add those prefixes, yeah? But in Zabbix 4.0, uh, we introduced by basically the exclamation mark, and if you use the exclamation mark, Zabbix wouldn't convert, uh, wouldn't do any conversion. Six to one, exclamation mark seconds, six to one second. That's what will be displayed in Zabbix front end. Six to one second, this is an old style, it will be converted automatically to one minute, one second, yeah? And same with transactions per second. Sometimes we really want to see very clear and precise number, how many transactions per second we have. Maybe like in this case, 2,000, yeah? And 2,000 transactions per second, two kilo transactions per second. Maybe 2,000 exclamation mark transactions per second is two o o o TPS. So sometimes it is quite a nice touch, but still very, uh, very, very useful. In Zabbix 3.4, there were some hard-coded units like milliseconds, RPMs, uh, and RPMs and percentages, uh, which were treated differently. We didn't do any conversion uh, in 3.4, yeah? But uh, those, this blacklist still works. You can still use milliseconds without exclamation mark. It will work fine but it, this behavior will be deprecated uh, soon. So please use exclamation mark if you don't want Zabbix to add any prefixes, okay? Um, what else? Acknowledgements. You all probably know what is acknowledgement to Zabbix. So if you have a problem, so let's go to, to Zabbix UI. Uh, so, I don't know, we'll try to. So this is, this is a list of problems. I go to monitoring problems. 
uh, I have a list of uh, list of different different problems, and if I start working a problem, I I, I I can do a very simple thing. I may go here, like here, and I can uh, I can acknowledge a problem. Say, I am working on this will be resolved in in ten minutes. All right. So I acknowledge this problem. And then all other guys from my NOC team, they see, okay, so admin is working on this and he thinks that this problem will be resolved maybe in, uh, in, uh, uh, in a 10 minutes. And actually it's already resolved, yeah? So, but then some other guy could, 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 could write something, okay, I, I, I fixed it, all right? Acknowledge once again. And then you could see, all right, admin, I'm working on this. Maybe admin on some other guy said, I fix it so you can see some sort of chat, per problem chat, all right? But obviously there are a number of limitations. First is that message is mandatory. You cannot just acknowledge problem without leaving any message, yeah? You, the message uh, has to be there. And that's why some guys were using something like one, two, three. Okay, I acknowledge a problem, but since message is mandatory, I have to use something. I write ABC or one, two, three, yeah? And it's not good. Uh, also, there is no way how to put just a message. I don't want to acknowledge problem, but I want to, 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 to put, put some message. Okay, please network guys, have a look at this problem. But I don't really want to acknowledge this problem. The problem is still not acknowledged, it's, it's a new one. Okay, so it, it wasn't supported. And uh, there was no way just to close problem. Also in Zabbix uh, 3.4, we introduced ability to close problem, if it's allowed to close the problem. Yeah, it has to be defined on the trigger level. You may define that this problem can be manually closed. Okay, and uh, if, you, if you close the problem, oh, sorry. So you, you still need to uh, put some message. Okay, in Zabbix 4.0, now the concept is absolutely different. Uh, we introduced a number of significant changes here. One is that the message is optional. So you may put the message or you just uh, leave the message blank. It's, uh, it's absolutely okay. So the message is, is optional. And operations are also optional. You may put you may put a message, like, okay, hey network guys, please have a look at this problem. I think that's something in your department. Okay, uh, and you don't you don't put any operation. So basically everything is optional. And there are a number of operations which are supported right now. One is uh, acknowledge. You may acknowledge a problem optionally again. You may also, and this is a new feature of Zabbix 4.0, change severity manually, which is a very, very nice feature, okay? It could be, I don't know, some average problem, but then you did some investigation and uh, realized that this problem is really urgent, it needs to be fixed as soon as possible. So what you do, you go to this uh, update page, it's not called acknowledge, but now it's called update, problem update, and then you may change the severity. If it was not classified, for example, you may push it to disaster. From disaster, you can lower it to warning or information. So it's, it, it's all supported. And also you may close problem. Uh, so this functionality is still under development. I will not demonstrate it today. It's coming very, very soon. I think within two weeks, it will be released in one of the alpha releases, yeah? But what we are, we are doing here, we are basically replacing, we basically replacing uh, this, uh, yes, acknowledge them, yes, and maybe number of acknowledgement with much better control. So you can see how many messages here is that problem is acknowledged or not? Was it, clo was it closed or not? And then when you mouse over, you could see the whole list of actions which happened with these problems. And it really creates a very nice workflow. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. At, at this moment, there will be no restrictions. Yeah. So at this moment, no restrictions. Sorry. No. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. That's what we discussed internally, and we decided to release it uh, this way. But possibly in the future, we've been thinking about ability to have a different roles for different people uh, for different groups of users. And in this case, this might be maybe a good addition, since we don't have user roles. It's very kind of difficult to enable or disable it on per user level. We can, obviously we can do it globally, uh, but uh, not for groups of users, not for individual users. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so once again, uh, the message is optional and operations are also optional. So before, uh, before you want to acknowledge a problem, you may have a nice discussion between you and some other guys yeah, about these problems. Who is going to solve it? Or maybe is it a real problem or not a real problem and so on. And also messages are absolutely optional and uh, you, you, you can just acknowledge a problem without any message. You may change the severity and you may close a problem if it's allowed to close a problem. But yes, at this moment, uh, all users would be able to change the severity. Yeah, that's true. Any, any other questions? Okay. Uh, another minor improvement is that now it's possible to use multiple emails for, in, in one user media. Yeah, which 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 is which is quite nice. Yeah, so and basically there are two use, use use cases. One is when I want to send a message, for example, to myself and team team of people. Okay, and in this case, when message is delivered, it will be sent to Alex and to to Dev at example.com. So I can reply to all and we may have a very nice discussion over email. So I know that this message was delivered not only to, to myself, but also to, to some other guys. So this is the one use case and another quite obvious use case is when I have a few email addresses. Yeah, I have one email address at example.com and a Gmail email address so I can put both. All right, so very simple and but very nice improvement and I think this use case is qu quite important, yeah? So as you can see, we've got a problem like service HTTP load balancer is, is unavailable and uh, we may start communicating uh, about this problem over email. Uh, another nice feature, which is also very co uh, is coming very soon, I think it will be merged maybe this week or next uh, week into Zabbix 4.0 mainline. This is a more flexible auto-registration ba based on host metadata. Uh, who knows what is auto-registration in Zabbix? Okay, there are a few, a few guys know. Okay, so this is really useful, especially for monitoring of cloud environments and cloud nodes. How, how, how does it work? Uh, it works in a, in a very simple way. You install, you have one, uh, you have a new node to monitor, a new server to monitor. You deploy Zabbix agent there. Zabbix agent works in an active mode. Active mode means that Zabbix agent pushes data to Zabbix server. Okay? And Zabbix server has ability to auto-register this host. You don't have to uh, configure this host manually. Okay? As soon as Zabbix agent sends information to Zabbix server, it also includes host metadata. Host metadata is a field from Zabbix agent configuration file. And normally host metadata is filled by uh, some configuration management systems like a chef or puppet or uh, ansible, whatever. 
Okay, when you deploy a new node, you, you know that this node is running Nginx or this node is running MySQL or MariaDB or something else, okay? And then you put this information here. And then as soon as Zabbix server gets this information, he auto-registers, he creates a host for monitoring in Zabbix configuration. And he knows because here is Apache, here is MySQL, he knows that this host needs to be linked to template Apache, to template MySQL, and it will be a member of a group web servers and database servers. Okay, because of this information, we know that this host is running Apache with MySQL. And before uh, Zabbix 4.0, it, 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 uh, it wasn't possible to change role of this specific node. Okay? For example, after some time, you, you destroyed this node, created a new one with the same IP address, with the same host name, and the role of this host is absolutely different. It's the same host, same IP, uh, same DNS name, but the role is different. Now it's running GBoss, okay? And uh, in Zabbix 4.0, Zabbix would be able to basically to clean up all this stuff, unlink it from those templates, unlink it from host groups, and link it to a new template and link it to a new host group. So this is how it works. So it creates a very kind of a flexible, uh, flexible environment, and it's really a nice feature, especially for containers, for clouds, uh, for all those, uh, for all those things. Uh, Okay, and host metadata is basically, uh, for those who don't know, if you, if you, okay, I will just, I have Zabbix agent configuration file. And this is basically a string. So you may put, you may put any string here, okay? Like in, in my case, it was MySQL, uh, MySQL Apache. Uh, in your case, it could be something different. And then, basically how it works, in Zabbix you create uh, an action, special action, which is with event source of auto-registration. Okay, you create the action like, uh, register MySQL host, all right? And then you specify a condition. If host metadata like, or basically it contains MySQL, then what you do, you may obviously just send a message like, hey, uh, Zabbix admin, we have a new host to monitor and that's it, and please do all configuration manually. Uh, you, you can do this, uh, you may also execute some remote command if you have some automation, and you may also add host. Okay, we just, cr we, we, we create this host for monitoring, but since we know it is MySQL, we can link it to template, like template app MySQL application MySQL automatically, and we may uh, add it to some host group. I don't know if I have anything to MySQL. No, I don't. I don't know. Suppose it's uh, I don't know Linux servers, and that's it. Okay, so. As soon as Zabbix receive uh, auto-registration uh, connection from a new Zabbix agent and realizes there is a MySQL, it will link it automatically to Apache and it will add it to, to, the, to, 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 to the host group. In my case, this is a, a Linux server. That's how it works. In Zabbix 4.0, there will be also ability to remove it, to remove it from a template, to remove it to, from host groups and uh, create a new temp uh, link to a new template and link to a new host groups. So this, this is a very, very nice feature. 
Any questions here? Okay. Uh, next. Uh, this is a very nice feature. So finally we implemented, I would say, um, it's not a perfect implementation still, yeah. <laughs> But this is a this is this is a good step in the right direction. Now we have a button check now, okay? So for example, uh, for example, you have some item. All right, I don't know. So a item which is checked maybe every one hour. All right, but you you would like to check it right now. You'd like to you'd like to click and tell Zabbix please make this check right now okay what you can do now you may basically go to the configuration of this item and click button check now okay or I will do it okay check now so this is a check sum of ETC password or another option you just go to just uh, make a bulk selection Okay, you'd like check this item, maybe this item, this item, and uh, here is a check now. Okay, so request sent successfully. This request is sent to Zabbix server, so Zabbix server will reschedule those uh, checks. And good thing is that it works with proxies as well. So if this metric is monitored by a proxy and proxy is located far, far away, uh, this check will be performed by the by by, by the proxy. Uh, well, let's see if it worked or not, Linux 001. Okay, Linux 01, and it was checksum. Oh, sorry, checksum. Here it is. Some. Yeah, okay, so I don't know what is the time now. Quite strange timestamps. Uh, ah, okay. Okay, let me let me check. Sorry, maybe. Sorry, it's not here. I will check what what, what is the time zone for my front end. Now, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, so as you can see, I, I did it twice. Uh, the next check is supposed to be at 11.35, uh, but I, I I press check now two times at 60 seconds, 30, 36 seconds, and uh, Zabbix uh, performed it very well. So I said it's, it's not a perfect implementation. Why it's not perfect implementation yet? It's because, it's because uh, when you press a check now, Zabbix takes configuration of this item from uh, internal cache of Zabbix server, from Zabbix server internal cache, which, which, uh, which, is, which may not be ex the same as you have in a Zabbix database. So if you change item configuration and then click check now, it will not work. You have to reload uh, Zabbix server configuration cache first, okay? So it's still not perfect, but at least it it, it gives us some hope that <laughs> in the future it might be implemented in a, in, 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 in a good way. And especially this is very useful for uh, discovery, okay? So it, 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 it works for normal items and also for LLD rules, for low-level discovery rules. Because normally low-level discovery rules, they're executed maybe once per hour or maybe once per 24 seconds, uh, for 24 hours. 
And that's why this check now button is really, really important, you, especially if you want to check some user parameters, okay? This is, again, a very nice use case. When you create our own scripts, those scripts may create some JSONs or plain text data. We do some experiments. It's really nice to have this check now button. So it, it is implemented right now. Um, uh, in 4.0, we also implemented a nice feature, which is called tag-based permissions. So you probably know that in Zabbix, uh, we have permissions set on user group level for different host groups. So for user group, we specify permissions, read permissions or write permissions to a specific, to a specific uh, host group. But now you may also set up some sort of filtering based on tags. Okay, so for example, you have a number of data center, one here in Warsaw, one in New York, another one in Tokyo, and you'd like different uh, groups of people see different problems. With data center New York guys from New York, data center Warsaw guys from Warsaw, and so on. So now it's possible to, to do this thanks to the tag filtering. So how, how does it work? It works in a very, very simple way. So now I'm connected as a super admin uh, and I can see basically everything. I, I As you can see, I, I see some problems from Frankfurt data center, New York 2 data center, so New York 1, maybe some, some, some other data center. So I, I, I see everything, absolutely everything. But if I'm connected as a different user, so, okay, so I have a user Alex, and user Alex is a member of a group New York data center, okay? And uh, it has a permissions to see some read-write permissions for Linux servers, for Zabbix servers. And also this user has some uh, tag filtering options. Yeah? Like uh, Linux servers. Okay, let's, let, let's make it even simpler, okay? So, for example, I'd like to see only Linux servers in New York 2 data center and nothing else. Okay, and let's check how it works. Okay. We'll disconnect. We'll connect as user Alex. I go to... Okay, so I go to the list of uh, problems. Let's see what kind of filter I have here. So I don't have any, any filters. I can basically reset it, apply. And you see that I can only see problems from New York to data center, so nothing else. Okay. And again, you may have some different guys who are responsible for production environment and have filtering based on tag environment production. Or you may have some application owners or service owners and you give, them, you give these guys permissions to see only uh, services they are responsible for. Yeah? So if this is a service Jira, okay, just give them permissions to see only Jira and nothing else. So this is a very nice feature. It's, it's not really a kind of a permission thing. It's more like invisible filter because it only works for where in all areas where we display problems. So this is a dashboard widget problems. This is a monitoring problems. This is a monitoring overview when you select the problems. And it's also uh, Zabbix maps. Okay, so these guys, this, this guys, Alex, will never see anything else except data center New York 2. If problem has this tag with this value, it will be visible. All other problems will be hidden from this, from this specific user. Um, And 
what really makes it very powerful is that we may use a combination of a host group and tag. All right? So this user, Alex, he can see problems uh, generated by Linux servers only that has tag data center New York 2 and nothing else. So obviously we, we may add some, some other. We can put also Linux servers, tag data center, I don't know, Frankfurt 2. Okay, so the same host group, but different tags. Uh, also, maybe some other host group. I don't know. What else? Maybe some hypervisors. And the tag service. Uh, VMware. Okay, so this is this is how how this filtering works. Any any questions? Okay. And by the way, it affects actions as well. Okay, which is which is really nice. So basically, you may send, you may create action which would um, basically okay. Let's 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 do something like this. So I may create action. Send info about all problems. Uh, if uh, if uh, problem severity is uh, more than warning, like warning, average high and disaster. Okay, and operation will be uh, send message to user Alex. Okay. And despite the fact that we are trying to mm, react to all problems, the filtering will work on this level as well. So only information about data center New York 2 will be delivered to this user. No, no other actions uh, will lead to, to the message to be sent. Okay. Yeah. So it's really important. So it, it basically affects visualization part, monitoring problems, dashboard overview, screen maps. But it's important to remember that it affects actions like uh, normal permissions. Uh, Zabbix 4.0, we also introduced a few new ways for monitoring. And one is HTTP item type. Okay, so finally. In Zabbix, historically, we had uh, web monitoring. Uh, web monitoring is used to have some scenarios, some complex scenarios for web monitoring. When you go to some page, you do some logging, you you you, you verify that this is what you the information you receive that this is what you ex ex expected. You do some actions, you do logout, and then verify that everything is fine. This is called web monitoring in Zabbix. But now uh, you may create uh, metrics or items of type HTTP, HTTP check. And this is a really powerful way how to retrieve information out of HTTP or HTTPS services. I will just quickly show you uh, what we have here. So basically, Okay, maybe I will create a new host. The host will be called, I don't know, open source days, yeah, or is D. Uh, uh, will be part of Linux servers. Okay, host, or is D, no items, and maybe I will create a new item. 
So now you see there is HTTP agent. IPMI, SSH, Telnet, JMX, now we have support of HTTP agent. So for HTTP agent, obviously we need to specify some, some maybe some random key. For example, mm, okay, I will do some, some work here. Uh, on, on, on my local host, basically, I have a service, server status running. This is Apache server, uh, server status, which returns real-time information about the health of Apache uh, web server. Okay, and I will try to uh, grab this information using this check. Oh, sorry, it's here. So the key will be maybe Apache status. Here is my URL. Obviously, it's a, it is HTTP, but I can also use HTTPS, no problem. Uh, I can also maybe use some get or post variables here. Yeah, I can specify. Uh, I can specify it here. I, I don't. I don't have any uh, variables right now. I could also specify a timeout on per item level, which is quite unique thing for HTTP checks. Uh, I can also specify a request body. It obviously, in most cases, works best for post. Yeah, so for post, we may specify some raw data, or if you know that it's a JSON, we just copy paste some JSON data here. And this is a very good way how to retrieve information out of different APIs. Okay, so if you have some external API, which HTTP or HTTPS entry point. And, a, and API provides data with the rest, then okay, we just use request type get, or it's maybe some JSON RPC, or maybe some kind of extended rest, then we may uh, have some additional information here, some additional uh, JSON data or data in XML, if it's a, some XML SOAP API or JSON RPC API, okay? So in my case, I, d I will not use any request to data. We may all, you, you can also specify additional headers if you want. So you have basically the total control, what is, what, what, how body looks like, how headers uh, looks like. Uh, and uh, also this is a required status code. It might be well 200 or you may specify a range or I don't know, 400 for some, for some reason, yeah. In my case, I expect 200 only. Also, I, I want to specify what information I'm interested in. And also we have a choice here. One is uh, body. So I'm interested in body only. Sometimes I might be interested only in the headers received from a web server, or it might be a combination of a body and the headers. So in, in my case, it's just a body. I'm not interested in uh, kind of uh, uh, Apache-related information about this uh, re uh, response. Okay, uh, HTTP authentication is also supported, basic and ATLM. You may also specify certificates here. Uh, and, and that's it, and type of information, in my case, it will be a text. And update interval, maybe we'll put it as low as five seconds. And maybe the application will be Apache. And that's, that's probably, that's it. Oh, name, okay, yeah. Apache. Okay, so my host was called OSD. Let's check if it gets some data. Oops. Oh, sorry. Four oh four did not match the required status quo. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think. Let me check. Uh, oh yeah, because it's absolutely, uh, this is incorrect. Uh, 
Okay, let me check the host name. Here, I I don't know if um, since Zabbix server is running on this machine, I will check if if it works. If it's accessible here. Yeah, it should work. Just English. Let me check. Okay, let me check if everything here is configured properly. Mm. Oh. Body. Now it's still Yeah, it will take some time to recover if it's uh, not supported Yeah Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out where it's trying to connect there. Uh, then, because uh, it seems that the URL is fine. Get throw data. Response code. Okay, let's uh, let's try to create maybe uh, a copy of this status of Apache two. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, key name is, is absolutely, it's just a unique, unique key, so. Ah, okay, I see, I see what you mean, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. right. Oh, okay, so this new, basically the copy of the, yeah, probably uh, it, it was because of the post request, yeah. So this item will recover after some time automatically, but this item is just basically the copy of, of, of this one, it works fine. Yeah, so thanks for this suggestion about the post and get, yeah. All right, so, and, and here is the history. So this is information as, as we see now, okay? And uh, remember that in Zabbix we have uh, quite uh, powerful features. One is called uh, Zabbix uh, preprocessing. I will explain it a little bit now. <clears throat> okay. So and but but first I will maybe just to list you some of some of the use cases for web monitoring. One is the monitoring of the content of a web application is quite obvious. We just connect to a website and we check that the content of the website is absolutely fine. That's what we expect. One is really, really nice use case and we will explore it even more in Zabbix 4.2 and Zabbix 4.4. This is about getting, extracting information out of different APIs. So we may connect to, I don't know, even to VMware API or a Kubernetes API or <clears throat> OpenStack API. Uh, regardless, it's, it's a REST. It may be a JSON RPC, it may be XML SOAP. We will be absolutely fine to work with any of those, okay? And we may also retrieve some useful information from HTTP headers. Uh, for example, information about the version of uh, Apache. Yeah, if you would like to verify that <clears throat> all our Apache servers or Nginx servers are up, uh, up to date, we may just retrieve HTTP headers and uh, monitor for any changes and monitor what, what kind of version they are running right now. Like here, server Apache 2.4.1. And, uh, <clears throat> and this is how typical um, HTTP processing may look like. So first we do HTTP check, yeah? Just we do get or post request. HTTP will return us obviously, it may be some plain text, like in, in our case it's still HTML, but it could be a plain text returned by web server. It could be HTML, it could be JSON, could be XML, could be, could be whatever, could be PDF document, anything we want. Then Zabbix may perform some pre-processing Basically, uh, we we'll, because it's really hard to work. Uh, it's absolutely impossible, basically, work with HTML. It's impossible to work. It's it's quite hard to work with JSON. Yeah, so Zabbix will do some pre-processing, and pre-processing. If it's a JSON, we can use some JSON path. If it's XML, we may use XML path to extract information we really need or we may use it just a regular expression. And then uh, we, at the end we retrieve a normal metrics, basically the time series data or a string data or, uh, or some data that really makes, makes sense, yeah? And I will remind how preprocessing works basically, yeah? So in Zapix, when we define uh, an item and I will create a new item um, so, okay, so I have uh, two items. This is not rec still not recovered for some reason. Okay, probably we'll wait for some more time. Uh, and I, first of all, let's have a look at the information we received. Uh, this is Apache status. This is the information we have. Um, so there's a server version. There is a when the server is built, the current time, uptime, and so on and so forth. And maybe we might be interested in information like uh, 
number of requests per second. Okay, so this is a number of requests per second. Per second. Okay, and let's try to extract this information. Okay, let's try to, to get it, create a new metric. So what we do, uh, we basically create a new item. It could be Apache uh, requests per second. And uh, this will be of type dependent. So basically, this item depends on another item. It will take data from, from master item. Yeah? Instead of connecting directly to Apache or to, to Zabbix agent, it will reuse data which is already in Zabbix. It will reuse data we received as a Apache status. Okay? So this is the status of Apache. And the key is absolute. It could be, okay, our request per second, RPS, RPS, request per second, or maybe queries per second, QPS. So, and units, we will use uh, QPS, but we don't want it to be converted to kilo QPS or mega QPS. We will use the exclamation mark here. The type of information will be numeric float. As you can see, there is a, there's a decimal point, so it will be uh, like this. Uh, queries per second. Okay, it is related to Apache. And this is what is re really makes it interesting, pre-processing, all right? So this item is basically gets information from, from here, from Apache server status. Okay, th this is information for, 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 for this item. And we should use some technique to, to extract this value. I think in our case, since it's not JSON, since it's not XML, uh, it is uh, it is uh, it is HTML. Okay, let's see. Is it HTML or not? Yeah. So it's 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 really HTML. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a HTML. This is how it looks like. Yeah. I don't know if you see anything. No, <laughs> you don't. I'm sorry. I cannot zoom it. Yeah, but it's just. Uh, it's just, uh, there are some HTML tags and we see this text, eight to four requests per second. So uh, in this case, probably the easiest way is just to use a regular expression. Okay, so what we do, we use a regular expression. Uh, let's create it here. Probably it will look something like like this. Okay, and and the output. So basically, if we have some another matching uh, string here, um, so basically we 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 make we may combine uh, this part matching part and this matching part, for example, using using this syntax. The first matching part, the second matching part, yeah? So we use it here as a standard syntax for, for regular expressions. But we, we may use some other things, yeah? There are many, many different pre-processing options are supported. The one is a regular expression, and we really need to explore how to write correct regular expressions, yeah? The another is a trim. Trim is basically trimming uh, leading characters, uh, and characters at the end, right trim, left trim. There is also the way how to work with the structured data like XML. So basically we may extract parts of XML, not necessarily uh, some integers or floats, but, but some part or part of XML and then we, 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 we may use it later on or for something else. JSON path, we can do some, some custom, custom multiplier, what we were able to do before, simple change, change per second. And uh, some things like boolean to decimal, octal to decimal, hex, uh, hex, hex to hex to decimal. Okay. So let's see how it works. So I just use a regular expression, and I will try to to extract this part. This is number basically num number one. 
I think my regular expression is, is okay. Let's check if it works. Okay, we'll double check once again. So Apache request per second dependent item. Oops. It basically means that first Zabbix receives the value of this master item and then it will check if it has any dependent items and dependent items will be processed at exactly the same time as soon as we receive a value for for the master item okay units and as you can see we don't we don't specify any update intervals here because update interval is important on master item level only and that's it Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, so it works. Zero eight, uh, eight six queries per second. Yeah, eight seven queries per second, and and so on. All right. Yeah, and and the second uh, second the first item works now as well, so it recovered finally. Okay. Yeah, and this is a really very, very powerful thing. As you can see, if it's JSON path, we can use uh, the standard JSON path syntax. JSON is not really a standard. JSON path is not really a standard. There are a number of standards of JSON path, yeah? We use some kind of a simplified JSON path, okay? So if we have... Uh, uh, if, we, if, we, if we have uh, some JSON, we, we, you, 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 you can use a JSON path syntax here. Regular expression, hex to decimal, custom multiplier, change per second, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, I think a, a very, a, quite a typical case when we can use a preprocessing is when, for example, we receive a temperature in, uh, in Celsius, 20 centigrees, we have a C. Okay, and uh, well, in Zabbix 3.4, it was really impossible to process how to get rid of this C, to remove the, uh, in Zabbix 3.2, yeah? But now you can do just a right trim, uh, like, uh, let, me, let me show you. So you would you would uh, you would create an item, and in very simple preprocessing rule, which would be write trim, and list of characters C. Okay, so the C would be removed. Yeah. So instead of twenty centigrees, Zabbix will will get twenty at the end. So you can graph it, you can create triggers, and do whatever you want. All right. Any questions here? How many of you use item preprocessing right now? Not so many, yeah? Yeah, because this is a really, really powerful thing, especially if you have many custom scripts already written, because uh, normally we write custom scripts in order to do some conversion, in order to extract data from uh, text from HTML, but you you shouldn't do it anymore. Yeah, it's really, really a very powerful thing. Uh, yeah, and these are basically those examples. This is temperature 20 centigrees. We use a simple rule, right trim and temperature 12 centigrees. Uh, we've got a JSON, uh, like users, number of users. Um, we use JSON, JSON pass preprocessing and we extract this value. So user count, so this value. Uh, for example, we received some, so some information, like here is the response code, here is the size of, uh, of the response using regular expression. We may split it into two different metrics. Yeah, one is the response code, another is the size, the response size, yeah? And if it's unstructured text, some text, we can use a regular expression. So regular expression is really kind of uh, flexible uh, thing to work with. And the mass processing of metrics as well. 
just let me let me let me repeat for example if you want to monitor the status of mysql we may use just a single master item which would return all metrics like mysql extended status or mysql status there are tons of metrics and then zabbix server can basically split those metrics uh, split it into into, into some real-time series data, like MySQL transactions per second, MySQL reads, MySQL uh, number of select statements, update statements, delete statements, and so on and so forth. So this is very, very powerful feature. Any questions? Okay. Um, we also made a number of uh, improvements. Mm, now we support VFS dir count. It basically returns number of entities in a given uh, directory. For, for example, we'd like to calculate number of files, or we'd like to calculate number of directories, or files and directories, and so on and so forth. So we may use VFS dir count. This is really, really uh, nice. Um, a uh, nice item. VM memory size, it supports parameter uh, slab. We also made some improvements for net if in out total. Um, also log rotation, it supports a new mode copy truncate. There are some older applications that you that performs uh, log rotation using copy truncate method. Now we support it. And also, it's possible for those who use Zabbix for IPMI monitoring, for hardware monitoring. We, now we support search by full name for IPMI items. Uh, before going to accessibility and usability, let's make uh, another pre-processing uh, hands-on with the JSON. Okay, let's let's see how it works. Pre-processing with the JSON. Um, so, say I have a JSON. Yeah, I already have got a JSON, which is JSON text. Yeah, so JSON text. And it returns me some temperature information, information about humidity, like temperature one, temperature two. Okay, I will zoom it a little bit. Uh, Okay, so some some temp temperature information, information about humidity, and we would like to get this information into Zabbix. So let's see how, how it may work. And obviously you may receive this information from file or you may receive it from uh, doing HTTP check, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I will create a quick item. Maybe, okay. I will create an item. It will be also kind of a master item, which would be called uh, environment data. It's because it's humidity, it's a temperature, basically it's everything about my environment. Uh, it would be a Zabbix agent. And uh, I and the key would be I think it's called VFS uh, file contents. So my file is located at home. Zabi home. Alex data. JSON txt. Okay. So this is the text data will be retrieved every five seconds. Uh, could be related to my room, maybe. Okay, so here it is. VFS file contents. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so this is information we received. This is a JSON. So the question is how to how to extract this information out of out of JSON. Again, 
we take advantage of uh, item pre-processing and the master item. So what we do, we create a new um, new item. Room temperature one information. This is dependent item, which is based on my environment data. Key could be anything. Room temperature one. Uh, so let's have a look. Temperature is flow data. Units could be, well, basically centigrees. Okay. Room. And I have to use some preprocessing. First, since it's a JSON, I can use a JSON path. So my task is just to retrieve this part. Okay? So I have to specify a JSON path. In this case, it would be quite easy, I guess. So it would be dollar sign dot temp. So this is a temp. Okay, now I am on this level. But I'm interested in temp one. So temp one. All right, so I will get this part. But I'm not interested in centigrees. I would like to get rid of centigrees. So what I do, I create a very simple rule, right trim, and I'd like to remove C. I'm not interested in centigrees. Okay. Okay. And that's it. Uh, let's have a look if it works. Yeah, it works. So this is 20.4, let's have a look, 20.4 centigrees. But this centigree is a different one. This is taken from units because I specified units centigrees, right? So this is this is different one. So Zabbix basically, uh, so now we may have a graph and we can see that this data, this data is coming. It's 24, 24 centigrees. Okay, so that's very typical uh, way how to work with pre-processing and how to work with master and dependent items. Yeah, the question is. Yeah, okay. Yes, absolutely. So, and Zabbix does it quite often. Uh, if you'd like to monitor the difference like, mm, I, I will create a real example. Mm, say, we'll create another file, like, here it is, one, two, three, okay. Uh, we'll create a new item, which will be called this new Zabbix agent VFS file content num it's called num uh, unsigned and in preprocessing here is thing which is called simple change or change per second okay so simple change is just a difference and the change per second is difference of value divided by difference on number of seconds or milliseconds yeah it's just basically uh, the change per second, all right? And I don't know, let's try with a simple change and see how it works. Mm, okay, I will put maybe just uh, five seconds here. Okay, okay, latest data. Okay. First, it takes two times to calculate the first value, yeah? Okay, zero. Okay, because there is no difference. And now we will we will modify it. Uh, one, two, three, maybe five, three, okay? It's 30. Okay, that's how it works. Uh, normally, actually, in most cases, we don't use a simple change. In most cases, we use the change per second. For example, when we have a counter, ever growing counter, like 
number of transactions. So we use a change per second, and in this case we receive, basically at the end we get number of transactions per second, or bytes per second, or something else per second. Yeah, It's much more useful. Okay, any more questions? Okay, let's move forward. Uh, there is another group of improvements related, to, just as related to usability, the database down message. Uh, when Zabbix database is not available, Zabbix would send you email with message like database is down. That now you get a real reason why your database is not is not available with some more details, which is quite nice nice feature. Um, in Zabbix 4.0, we made a huge work, huge work to make Zabbix UI um, useful for visually uh, impaired people, for people who has some uh, um, uh, problems uh, to, to recognize text. Yeah, who for 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 blind people who uses screen readers and now Zabbix is, is compatible with the screen readers. Yeah, the screen readers are quite expensive software that you use and screen reader will basically read everything which is displayed on the screen. Here is a button, here is a text, here is this, here is that. So your UI must be prepared for screen readers. And now Zabbix is, is, is ready for screen readers. But also we created the new themes why is high contrast light and high contrast dark? Uh, it's also for those people to, to, to make to, to make Zabbix easier for those people who cannot see well or who, who for people who have some color uh, blindness. Yeah. Okay. We also marked mandatory fields now. So if the field is mandatory. You have this asterisk here, this asterisk, this asterisk. Uh, some fields which are not mandatory, they are not um, they are not marked this way. And you can feel this difference right away. So this is Zabbix 3, 3.4, I guess. And if you go to the configuration of items, you click on the item, it's really hard to understand what is mandatory, what is not mandatory, what, what fields needs to be filled, what fields shouldn't be filled. This is Zabbix 3.4, yeah? In Zabbix 4.0, you go to configuration of item and you see straight away. So this is mandatory, this, 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 uh, and this, and this, and that's it, okay? Kind of a small improvement, but very, very nice improvement. Uh, another thing which we introduced is so-called kiosk mode for dashboard. Let's see how it works. So you go to the dashboard. This is a monitoring dashboard. You can switch to a full screen mode and full screen mode is basically supported everywhere. Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, if you go to monitoring problems, you can, you can switch to, to a full screen mode. Full screen mode basically removes a menu, a Zabbix menu, okay, and that's it. Uh, in the dashboard, you have also the kiosk mode. Here it is. You click here, you see there is a kiosk mode. And so, all right, and it will disappear. So no, no menu, no filter information, no, nothing. Okay, just, just a plain, plain data, widgets, and, and nothing else. If you'd like to return back, you just move your mouse, yeah and uh, the icon will reappear so you click here and you go to to a normal normal view back again again quite a small feature but really nice especially if you display information on uh, some screen walls yeah that's very very useful uh, what else yeah the full screen and the kiosk mode condensed view for problems this is a nice feature, especially for those who migrated from a commercial software like uh, like a BMC, 
uh, or some, some IBM Tivoli, yeah? Uh, in Zabbix, as you can see currently, so this is like a normal view. And on one screen, you could probably see maybe one, two, three, maybe 20 problem maximum. Sometimes it's not enough, yeah? Especially if you have a large number of problems, you have to deal with these problems all the time. You really want to see more information. So now we have this compact view. Here is a compact view in the filter. You click here, you apply, and uh, it's much more compact view. Okay, so on a big screen, it would display you at least 50 problems per screen. Yeah, so this is our goal on a standard dis on a standard uh, monitor. Mm, it would, would it would show you uh, at least 20 problems. Okay, so it's all compressed, and one problem is displayed per line, guaranteed. So it's okay. Uh, new time selector. This is what we are working uh, on right now. It's not implemented fully. It will be implemented very soon, but I actually have a development version on my machine, and this is how it looks like. Yeah, remember the old time navigator. Uh, this one, okay. The this one, yeah. It was. I don't know if it works or not. No. Okay, I'm not connected. This is a, this is older version 3.4, but it it wasn't so easy to use. Yeah, for example, if I want to display information for today or I'd like to display information for the whole week, it was really really difficult to to do this fine fine tuning uh, with this uh, scroll bar. Absolutely, kind of absolutely impossible. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's okay, yeah, but still, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any data on this computer. This is development, this is development system. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, like this, okay. And uh, in, um, and this is what is coming, yeah? So we have kind of nice selection of the time periods. Kind of industry standard right now, yeah? So, as you can see, here, basically, even uh, with the filter fully collapsed, you, you could say, okay, this is information for the last one hour, okay? You can switch to last 15 minutes, you can uh, display information just for, for today, last seven, uh, six hours, and so on. You may zoom out, obviously, or you may zoom in uh, using using mouse, yeah. And it works everywhere. For example, in uh, problems. Okay, let's see. It should be here. Ah, no, we don't have it in problems. We have it on the dashboard. Okay, maybe it's a bad example of the dashboard. Okay. Uh, like a web server. Or Dashboard. Okay, anyway, let's see. Mm. So maybe it's not in the dashboard yet. Anyway, it's, this is a development version of, of, of it. So it's not integrated into, into the latest alpha yet, but th th this is basically how it works. And if we have, uh, I'm I'm trying to find a page with the filter as well. I don't I don't have it yet. Am I connected to the admin? Okay, let me reconnect quickly. Problems. We have filter overview. Filter filter filter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, at this moment I don't have any pages with the filter and the time selector. But if you have both filter and time selector, 
it will it will be displayed the following way. You you could see a filter on the left side and uh, time time selector on the right side. So there will be basically a filter and a time selector. And filter is separated from a time selector. Okay, that's that's how it's going how it's going to work. Okay. Um, what's next? Uh, trigger section removed. We don't monitor. We don't have monitoring triggers anymore. So what does it mean? In 3.4, uh, you have monitoring problems and you had also uh, monitoring triggers, and it, it was quite confusing for for many users, because uh, from from our point of view, what is a trigger? Trigger is just a problem generator. We don't really have to expose information about problem generators to end user, I think. So it should be a matter of a configuration. So we don't display trigger information anymore in a such way. Yeah. Uh, all information which is displayed here, like uh, maybe some of those acknowledgement statuses, information about the age of the problem, it's all moved to, to, to problems, okay? So in Zabbix 4.0, we don't have monitoring, uh, monitoring triggers anymore. It's only monitoring problems. So no confusion. Monitoring problem displays list of problems discovered by Zabbix and nothing else. Because some, it, it was it was really quite confusing for some people. It, it was kind of hard to understand uh, what is the difference between a trigger and between a problem. Especially if uh, we have some simple triggers like, uh, I don't know, lack of free disk space because trigger goes into problem state and we think that this is a problem, but it's not a problem. Problem is event which is generated by this trigger. Okay. Uh, filtering by tags. Uh, it is applied to monitoring problem and monitoring dashboard. And this filtering was extended very, very much. So as you can see, you could filter by tags uh, in, a, in a number of ways. And you can even use a different um, different logical operators here, and and or. Like uh, if data center is equal to New York 2, and maybe service is, uh, I don't know, if, if I have a Jira here and they apply, and then you, 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 you could filter it out. Okay, maybe it's in history. Uh, yeah, so I have it, I have it in the history somewhere. Also, you may control how many tags you'd like to display, yeah? Because actually, you may have many, many tags for 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 certain problems. So you just specify, okay, I would like to display only one tag. Yeah. So in this case, there will be a data center displayed, but obviously, you do mouse over, and you can you can see all these tags: New York Two, Environment Production Service, uh, Service Jira. Uh, what else? There are some uh, smaller things like uh, show details, like highlight the whole row if there is a problem. So let's see how it works. Ah, so those problems are already resolved. I don't have any anything to show you. Maybe this way. Okay problems yeah so like this yeah okay uh, another small addition to a filtering in a, in a monitor in the configuration of items now it's possible to to see a regular items like a normal items and items which were discovered by low level discovery rules so you go to 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 configuration of items and you select uh, how this item 
uh, basically how, how it was created. Is it just a normal item or it was a result of a discovery rule? Uh, in host list, we also introduced a few filters. So if you go to configuration of host, now there is a filter monitored by any server or a proxy. So the most useful is probably by proxy. When you, when you select a proxy, for example, and you see host monitored by this specific proxy. And why it is important is because if you want to switch from one proxy to another, what you do, you just uh, go to this page, you select all hosts monitored by proxy 01, then you do mass update, you just select everything, do mass update, and you may switch all those hosts to another proxy with a few mouse clicks, which is really, really useful. Or for example, you'd like to make sure that all your hosts monitored by, prox by proxies, in this case, you just see how many of your uh, hosts monitored by server. Okay, you just select uh, host monitored by server only. Okay. Uh, small improvement. It's about those twin boxes. So in Zabbix 3.4, and before, uh, we used the twin boxes quite extensively. So what is a twin box? Twin box, this is this control. Like groups, in groups, and other groups. And sometimes it was quite hard to understand. Is this template is related to this group or maybe to those groups? Not, not so easy to understand. So we don't use this control anymore. We don't use twin, box, twin boxes uh, uh, anymore. Now you just go to configuration of a template or configuration of a host, and there is just a selection of groups, yeah, or a selection of uh, uh, selection of uh, 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 groups in, in in the configuration of templates as well, yeah. So no twin boxes. Also was quite con confusing, especially for for new users. Uh, new graph widget. This work is in progress. It will be delivered in 4.0, but the most important part is that it would be, it would be possible to display a multiple metrics which matches specific patterns. Okay, for example, if you specify a key, and here is asterisk. Yeah, so everything, PFS, DEF, um, I don't know, in, in, out, read, write, for example, on a, sin, on a single graph. Or, or you have a multiple metrics created by low level discovery rule. And you don't want to, dis, you don't want to update your graph over and over again. So in this case, you just specify some pattern here, or also the pattern will be supported for a host. You can you can write uh, asterisk dot example dot com. So Zabbix will select all items with much of this condition and display those. And you can draw it as a line, like points, like staircase, like field uh, field region, uh, and so on. And this is how how it may look like. Okay, so this is basically some points. This is a number of disk operations, read disk operations, write disk operations, because it matches both, okay? PFS, def, something operations. And this is just a staircase uh, graph, which is especially useful for, for some um, things like if you have values two, three, four, it's, it's, it's really, really, really useful. When something changes its state, from one state to another. So it's really easy to read. Okay, that's what is coming. Any any questions so far? Yes. No, 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 Pro okay. So, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe I wasn't clear enough. Uh, it, it, it wasn't about removing of uh, triggers altogether from Zabbix. No, triggers are still there. We just remove triggers from a monitoring section. If you go to monitoring, there will be no information about triggers. Okay, you go to monitoring, there is only dashboard, problems, overview, but no triggers. But still, triggers are there. Configuration, host, triggers are everywhere. So no worries, triggers are there. <laughs> okay. Any any more questions? Anything else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, OS2 is not supported yet. Uh, LDAP is already supported. You can use internal authentication. You can use uh, LDAP. You may use a basic authentication, no problem. Yeah, it's already supported. Uh, actually, I didn't mention it, but it will be even more flexible in Zabbix 4.0. Yeah, in Zabbix 4.0, you may basically choose how you want to authenticate using internal and maybe LDAP. So, for example, if LDAP is not... Uh, uh, is not operational for the same user you you can still use internal authentication yeah it's a username password which is stored in um, in, in, in Zabbix database so basically this is authentication against Zabbix yeah database yeah Yeah, it will be locked down after five attempts by default. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, yes. If you if you try to brute force, the question was about brute forcing. Uh, you would see it. Uh, you you would see it here. So I I can even try. Yeah. So I will demonstrate how it works. Like one, two, three. Okay, so you see account is blocked for 24, 26 uh, seconds. But then if I'm connected to admin, I go to administration uh, users. If I'm quick enough, I see it's blocked. I can actually unblock it right away. And any more questions? So any questions? Yes. Well, I think it's about two months time. Two months time, yeah. As I mentioned before, we, we have three or four features which needs to be uh, finished. Some of them, it's, uh, it's new graphs. It's a uh, new time navigator that has to be, which is in Q&A right now. Uh, and uh, new form for acknowledgments new more flexible form that's as soon as we finish it there will be a better release and then um, we have this idea in mind yeah uh, the problem right now is that we don't have maybe too much expertise within Zabbix to deal with the mo mobile development so I think uh, it should be addressed in a, in a two different ways. One is to make Zabbix UI more responsive. Yeah, this is what we will be working on. And another is, is really about Zabbix uh, mobile application. I really want to have official Zabbix mobile application dev developed by Zabbix team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, 
uh, any more? I will I will talk about upgrade a little bit uh, later. But uh, maybe any other questions? Okay, no questions. So the next uh, quick topic is uh, upgrading, and uh, upgrade is always very simple with Zabbix. You just download the latest. Uh, I don't know what. Normally, you just do RPMs or uh, apt get uh, install or yum install, and that's it. So you have to upgrade Zabbix server and proxies if you have a proxies. You don't have to upgrade Zabbix agents. Zabbix agents are backward compatible from Zabbix 1.0. So no need to upgrade agents. If you if you want to use the new features of Zabbix agents, that you of obviously you have to. But other other than that that's fine to leave Zabbix agent as they are. No problem. Okay? Then you update Zabbix frontend files and database is upgraded automatically. You just execute a new binary, new Zabbix server binary, and it will upgrade your database structure. Actually, upgrade from Zabbix 3.x to Zabbix 4.0 might, might take a little bit of time because we change the structure of the events table. Yeah? In events, we have name, event name and depending on the number of rows in the event table it may take some time I don't know how, 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 how much time obviously it depends if you have one million of records there or one billion of records there so it may take some time unfortunately but we are just unable to avoid it okay so I, I would advise you to test it in a test environment first just uh, create a copy of your production database execute uh, Zabbix servers there to see how much time it takes to, 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 to have more maybe to, to, to have more educated decision later on uh, okay just maybe anything else maybe some other questions okay no more questions just a few announcements after release of Zabbix 4.0, there will be new training programs. As you probably know, we already have a Zabbix certified specialists, and maybe some of you here are already Zabbix cert uh, are certified specialists. We have Zabbix certified professional, but in Zabbix, after release of Zabbix 4.0, we have Zabbix certified users program. This will be a very short program, maybe four hours up to six hours. To those users who just use Zabbix. It's about the kind of monitoring part of Zabbix. It's about uh, terminology of Zabbix. So if in your company you have 20 people working with Zabbix, this is the best, this is, this is the best program for them, for end users. And we also have a certified expert. Okay, so this is kind of the starting point and this is uh, for those who really wants to know Zabbix in a very, very good details. Yeah, and here we will talk extensively about the most advanced topics you may find with Zabbix. Okay, some, some, some best practices, some, some troubleshooting things, uh, how to make uh, some tricky things with Zabbix and so on. So this is Zabbix certified expert, two additional training programs. And the difficulty obviously goes from left side to the right side. So this is very, very basic. And this is for those who already have Zabbix certified professional, Zabbix certified specialist. Uh, very soon we are launching Zabbix integrations uh, page. And Zabbix integration page is about, uh, is about kind of a directory of of um, all kinds of integrations we have with Zabbix right now. So if you have a question, how to monitor certain application with Zabbix, here you can find an answer. Okay, how to monitor I don't know some uh, asterisk, or how to deal with Arduino, or maybe how to compile Zabbix to run on. Uh, Okay, not on Arduino, but maybe Zabbix agent for Arduino platform. Okay, you can find this information here. Or maybe you have a question, how to integrate Zabbix with the service now? Or how to integrate Zabbix with the remedy? 
Okay, also you go to Zabbix integration page, you click on, uh, I don't know, notification and alerting, for example, and you, you, you get this information straight away. So this will be a collection of best practices, Zabbix plus some other systems. Uh, another announcement which we did maybe a few weeks ago is the Zabbix in the cloud. So very soon, it's uh, we uh, we are working on this platform right now. It's in in the, in the beta. Uh, it's basically our SaaS solution. So if you don't want to run Zabbix in your environment, uh, we we can we can do it for you. So there will be different options with different. Uh, kind of support agreements and different sizing and that's that's uh, that's what we will launch very very soon at this moment you may go to this page basically on every zabbix.com page there is zabbix cloud coming soon you may enter your email and after some time we will inform you uh, that okay please please go the platform is available and you you'll get the free trial so you can try zabbix zabbix in the cloud that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please, please let me know. And we also have our booths with some very nice giveaways with the stress cubes, with some, some other interesting stuff. So please come by and let's discuss if you have something to discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you.